All right. Howdy, guys. It's uh, it's been a while. A uh, bit too long, if I do say so myself. It's been a, quite some time since I've uploaded a video, and I'm sure from the title you're pretty excited for this one. It's been requested a lot. Uh, uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory from the title. I'm going to be showing y'all how I do my commands and stuff for some of my videos. Uh, there, It's going to be a pretty in-depth tutorial, I hope. It's just commands. I've only used commands in any of my videos. I don't go do modded stuff. I've been switching to using data packs uh, more recently, but then again, not too recently. I haven't played Minecraft in quite some time. It's been a couple of years, so uh, hope I'm not too rusty. But yeah, don't. I'm not really the best at uh, creating intros and all that, but I'm also doing <laughs> my voice now so you can hear me, because I would not want to go the old school writing text on a sign. <laughs> so um, yeah, let's get right into it. Let me get this command block. So, to start off, a lot of my videos that showcase stand abilities and so on uh, go over the same kind of idea that's evolved over time to become more efficient of having a select number of abilities that you can cycle between and choose when to activate. And that originated as specific items you would hold and throw on the ground and that would, is how you activate the ability, and so on. Originally, they were enchanted books because you couldn't craft with enchanted books, so they were kind of locked in at a specific level, as in they're unobtainable in survival play. And that worked for a bit, and then as I progressed and learned more, I switched to more empty slots because they're a lot easier to work with, and they allow for tools to be held so you don't have to mud up your inventory or in your hot bar with a bunch of different items and so on and it just kept evolving i got better over time <laughs> and then i i mean as you all know i I've, I've been dead for the past couple years so i i did kind of burn myself out there's only a limited amount of stands that i can faithfully recreate like i have no clue how i'm going to make yellow temperance and so i didn't even touch it I only made the stands that I felt like I was confident in to faithfully recreate their abilities and I mean, hence the name, I made T4C like three times. It's my favorite stand. Um, yeah, so I mean, I plan with this tutorial to just be a basic overview of a lot of the gates and such that I use and how to kind of incorporate what I've learned over these years to make your own thing, I guess, because, I mean, if I just recreate, I could do just D4C again, but that really only shows you how to make D4C. I'd rather show you a lot of the tools that you can use to create your own things, because it, this isn't locked to only JoJo stands. You can go out and make whatever you want. I just particularly like JoJo's. So, uh, yeah, let's get right into it, as the, the YouTubers say. So, to start off, Tags are going to be one of your most important things. Tags and scoreboards, they're the bread and butter of almost all command block machines. <laughs> so uh, let's start off with basic setting up of tagging your player with your specific ability. So to start off, I'm going to place a command block here and grab a button. You're going to want the command, the tag command. Oops. Uh, usually go with at P and then you want to add. Now. You can name these whatever, you're probably going to have a bunch of different tags on the player because you want to be testing for a bunch of different things. Tags are very, very nice to use, they are very simple, they're easy to understand, and they're effective. So if I want to tag the player with test, right here, click this button, add a tag test, it's me flurry. So now I can use the execute command. This is the best command ever added to Minecraft. <laughs> it lets you do so many tests and setting up for a bunch of different commands. It really, best thing that ever happened. So to just test right here, I can do an execute if this is, read it like it is, it's if this, then it will proceed. So if I do if an entity at P, the closest player, 
has the and then these brackets are for uh trying to think of the word they're like special cases so whatever you put in these brackets it's going to look for the closest player with these brackets if it, if it can't find it it won't pass because it the if is false and if statement is either true or false so if the tag is equal to test boom test pass count one it can only find me i'm the only one player if i make it lowercase test failed because i made the tag a capital t test this is how you're going to test and apply all the different abilities and checks on your character i guess the player that has the ability you're using uh so for instance if i were to create a special trail uh i'm not going to go over it too much but you probably should have a basic level of understanding in command blocks before <laughs> looking at this tutorial i'm not going to go over the true basics but like for instance setting up chain command blocks like i'm just going to go this into a chain command block you should understand how that works i'm not going to explain it too much but for instance if i were to go actually i don't even need the chain command block i can just go execute at at p tag equals test run and let's just do a simple particle command so bubbles bubbles and we want them at your feet with uh no speed or no uh size they're just going to spawn at the uh, origin and then no speed one particle boom now i'm going to have a bubble on my feet i've created a trail for uh not clogging the screen i'm going to quickly turn the command block outputs to false so that way it doesn't cover up half the screen but now you can see that there's a bubble on my feet and if i were to create another command block over here really simple and go tag at p remove test no more bubbles it's a very simple check most people that's common sense i guess or like it's self-explanatory it's not that complicated to learn and this is pretty much the bread and butter of how all the abilities work is it's just various tests leading to simple other commands being executed like particle effects just flashy stuff to make it look cool you know so uh let's get into a bit more of the more complicated stuff because let's start with a basic let's call it my ability is what i'll call this tutorials ability that we'll be creating you do not have to follow along with everything i'm doing you can try and apply your own stuff uh one bottom line thing i'll say is that i am not the smartest guy in command blocks i have looked at hours upon hours of youtube tutorials minecraft forms google is your greatest ally for learning how to do command block stuff i barely understand it i know just what i know and if i'm ever confused i never hesitate to go look up it's it's always useful so you want to have your ability you want to give it a name a specific or specific name so that way it won't collude with other tags that other people might have I'm cr I create a lot of my stand concepts and so on and examples in Minecraft with the idea of it being implemented into a survival world without it causing issues with, you know, affecting the survival portion of the game. I don't want it to break apart if it's in multiplayer and so on or working with other data packs or other commands and so on. So giving it a spe giving your ability a specific name will help it not uh, cause errors with other programs that are running. So basics uh let's get into it so you want to create repeating command blocks checking for your player in their tag so we're gonna execute uh as the i won't explain it too much for the execute command there's so much knowledge in there i'd recommend just checking out the wiki page and reading through it or finding another tutorial to explain it we want to be executing as the player that has our tag And then we want an MBT as well. Now, MBTs are very useful for uh, checking for a lot more specific terms and hidden traits and toggles and floats and ints and bools and so on of players and just entities in general. So for instance, I'm going to do what I've done for a lot of my more recent abilities and so on uploaded to YouTube we're going to use the selected item slot mbt we want zero 
So right here, then we want to run, let's just say uh, title at s. The at s is going to make it so we don't have to write out this entire thing again. Uh, action bar, ah. or no, wait, that'll want, yeah, hang on. Let's just go title. Does it want the full JSON thing? Oh, I'm never good at doing JSON stuff. I'll worry about the title later. I'll just say hi. So now, if we have the tag right now, let's make sure, set it up. So now if I go in the slot one, it's going to say hi a million times. So now we can test if we have our slot zero or the first slot in our hop bar highlighted or selected. That's how I usually go around with, granted, I might have to look up some stuff. As I just said, it's always, always helpful to look up some stuff. I usually use a generator for a lot of my title commands because I don't know JSON all that well. But uh, I would usually have, if you have any of the slots that we have our abilities in selected, it'll have a title in your action bar just above your hotbar showing you what ability you have selected. It's kind of needed to, you want to give the player a visual of what they're doing. So I'm going to bring up on another tab on a different monitor right now, some uh, title generators. One sec. There we go, a tell raw generator. So I am going to create a, what should our, what should the first ability be that our character or player will have? We want it to, let's go over the few basic. Let's make like just a teleport in the direction you're looking, a quick blink forward. So I am going to really quickly create a text. Let's give it a nice cyan color, no more blue. Let's try that. Boom, blink. Actually, I'm going to, it kind of clashes. I'm gonna turn it black. So now if I go over here, get rid of the run, say hi, put in the action, blink, there we go. Now, while we are on our selected, the f while we have the first slot selected, we will see the blink show up in our hop bar, in our action bar. That way you know you have the blink ability selected. So, to continue with this, we want to create some scoreboards. These will be generate, these will be our uh, way to check if the player is performing actions that we want to use. In past and post, pretty much, almost all of my abilities use the same kind of... After I left items that you would drop on the ground detection, I would use sneak detection. As in, you'd hover on the ability you want, the selected slot, and then you would sneak for a second, and that would activate the ability. That was the best... Because Minecraft doesn't let you do custom keybinds, this was the best option I could think of, rather than using items because I'd rather the player be able to use any survival items they're working with and just be able to tap shift use the ability. It's just what I like to do. So to do that we need to create a scoreboard first. We want to create scoreboard objectives add. I'm going to call it sneak and then it's going to be a minecraft dot custom minecraft dot sneak time. This will tick up for every f tick that uh, the player is sneaking. And this will be across all players. Now, specifically, what we want to do is create another repeat command block. And we want to go execute as at p tag equals my ability scores equal sneak one equals one. And then we want those two periods. 
So what this is doing, this right here, is we're checking if they have a scoreboard value of minimum of sneak. Putting these two periods after the one means that it needs a minimum of one but can have any maximum. So this is checking if you have at least one. And then we want to create a chain that will continue on because this command was able to uh, function. I'm actually going to make it an if statement because I believe that will go on if I... Uh, then we want to go... Actually, no. No, 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 no. We want to make it an a execute as that run scoreboard object, no, player, players set at s sneak zero. This will be basically create a trigger for us that we can mess around with. You can check the times and so on, as in the moment our sneak value goes to one, it will set it to zero, but past this, a command will run, which allows the chain conditional command blocks to run their command. So if I go, say, hi, if I sneak, it says hi. So now what you can mess around with is, I'm going to say G there to just split it off so we can tell when new ones come, is if you set a minimum of, let's say, five, it will take a lot longer than tapping it. So you can mess around and make sure you have a right feel for how long you want them to hold down shift because, I mean, whatever you need it to be, if you want to make a charged ability and so on, you can mess around with it a lot. I'm going, I like five, I'm going to keep it at five. So now what we want to do is I'm going to go back into this and add an MBT value in here for selected item slot zero. Is that what we have? Yep. So now while I'm on this and shifting, it will say hi. So another scoreboard value we want to create and objectives. This is going to be our cooldowns for abilities. These are a little rough around the edges, but they get the job done. So uh, what we want to do is call this a very specific objective name for the specific ability and the ability's like powers name. <laughs> So I'm going to call it my ability blink CD for cooldown. Very long, but very, very specific. And then we want it to be a dummy. This means that nothing will, it can only be changed using the scoreboard command. So we want to, after this gets set, we want to execute at this is, we're going to be performing the blink here, so we want to execute at, at P that has our tag. We don't need to tag anything extra here, like if they are sneaking or if they have the right slot selected, because we're already checking it here. This command can only run if this command runs, so we don't need to loop and cause more issues or potential issues and a lot more code. So we want to anchor this at the eyes of the player and then run TP with local coordinates of, let's say, five blocks in front of them. And now, if I were to do this, I think, oh, run TP. Oh, I, whoops, yeah, TP at S. There we go. Right? No. Ah, right. I just read we're execute we're executing at anchors eyes as at s no what am i wrong here what is it not like is it that run tp execute at well i guess this is just part of coding is you run into bugs and you have to fix them so we want execute eyes at tp at my ability Run as it has. Does it want it here? No. Hang on, let me test this. If I go TP, uh, where's the, there we go. Oh, that just threw me through the ground. It is working now, which, well, kind of, the command is running, it's not finding an error. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. That is why we're not conducting the command as someone. So maybe if I go as at s, then at s. No, we don't like that. Well, I guess we're just going to have to take the long way of going at p tag equals my ability. I will keep in, or I will say this to keep in mind that all of these abilities are made to only be used by one person at a time. Having two people using the same thing will run into a lot of problems with the same names and different cooldowns getting lapped over each other because only one scoreboard and tag can exist and all these command blocks only exist once. So it's not going to be perfect. But I believe we are blinking in the direction we're looking. You just have to look up a bit. If you if you look down, it's going to TP you down. <laughs> For if no one knows what these, instead of the little squigglies that usually the tildes, these up arrows, I don't know what else to call them, are used for local positions around the entity you're executing at or the position you're executing at. So I got the position of the player, we're executing at the position of the player, and we're anchoring our position around the eyes of the player, or the entity, it's for... It will work on any entity, so like if you're anchoring at the eyes of a cow, it will go and position it at the eyes of the cow, but we want it to be positioned at the eyes of the player, so that way you can be checking which direction you're looking, and then we're executing five blocks in front of the player. So it's going to basically start at my eyes, and then create a beam five blocks out, and then TP me there. Very, very useful thing is being able to execute in a local position rather than world position. Uh, so after we complete the teleport, what we want to do is create another chain, and set a scoreboard value of the player to start the cooldown. So scoreboard players set are at P with tag my ability. The cooldown set it to one. Now what we want to do is create another repeat. So we want to scoreboard players add at P that has Tag equals my ability, scores equal uh, my ability, blink CD equals one. We want to add one. So we're basically creating a tick clock over here. So because all the command blocks will that are repeating will repeat their command once every tick, and there are about 21 ticks per second, or it's usually 20 ticks. 20 to 21 is a good area you want to give it for. I'm going to use 21 because you always can give one or so leg room, <laughs> one ticks or so. So basically what we're creating here is we're checking if the player has at least one of this score continuously add to it, and we're setting it to one over here when you use the ability. So now we're going to create the catch where we wait for a specific time, then stop it. So scoreboard object or no scoreboard players set at P tag equals my ability scores equal my ability blink CD equals let's go 201. That's going to be 10 seconds. Or we could go 101 for five seconds. You can, it's basic math, 20, 20 ticks per second, 20 times five, 100. So we're waiting five seconds, and then we're going to set the ability's cooldown to zero. And this is going to create our cooldown. It's just these two. Now what we wanna do is go back to where we're allowing the ability to be activated in the first time when we're checking for the sneak. We want to, go into the scores section and make sure that our score for my ability cool blink cooldown is equal to zero. We don't want the player to be able to activate the ability while it's on cooldown. Now we can copy this command block using MBT. So we control middle click it to copy its MBT tags to so just copy it. Now we want to go into this 
and I'm going to really quickly make a right here where the color is. Let's uh, put that there and create some, I think it's like this. We want to create that and then go underlined. And then we want that true. And then we want selected slot, yes. And then scores equal my ability blink cooldown equals minimum of one. What this is doing is if the cooldown is active, then we want to show an underline through the Actually, I, is it the same? I think I can... An underline isn't as visual, especially with black. Let's make it strike through. Strike through. Yeah, I spelled that right. Basically, we want to show a different HUD for the player for when the ability is on and off cooldown, so that way they can see when they can activate the ability again. So I'm going to go back to the original one and also add in the same scores equals my ability blink cooldown equals zero. So, now let's see. Let's set our scoreboard. Players set, it's me flurry, blink cooldown zero. So, now we can see that the highlight is it was struck through and now it's off so I can use the ability again. Now I just teleported, I can't use it. I'm holding the shift and I just used it off cooldown. That is something I just thought of. If you use the ability, it resets the cooldown of the of your sneak score. It sets that to zero, but if you sneak at all, your score is gonna go up while you're off cooldown and so it'll immediately activate. So to counter that, what we want to do is move all of the checks we just made to a different area. So let's, whoops, let's move that to a different slot so I stop activating this. Move that command block up here, and then set this to just Sneak five. So while you have just while you just have the ability, if you're sneaking at all, it's going to set it to zero. Now what we want to do on this is just remove all of this and create an if statement. So we want to do an execute if entity at p tag equals my ability scores equal sneak is equal to four minimum, I think. Let's see. No. How do we do this? I apologize for my non-professionalism with these tutorials. I've never really done this before. But basically what I'm trying to do here is create a system where even if the ability is on cooldown, your sneak score will still get set back to zero. So that way you don't have to worry about creating a buffer. Where as soon as it goes off cooldown because you already sneaked while it was on cooldown, it's immediately going to blink you again. We don't want that. Unless if you're specifically trying to do that, but I mean, you already know how to do that. So let's... So this is still good. This is setting it to zero. Let's just check if you have a bare minimum of one. There we go. Well, ooh. It is teleporting me uh, pretty damn far. Let's just move up here and tag at p remove my ability. And then tp to zero, zero, zero. Whoops, 
I'm up here. Something to always keep in mind when it's just there. You can have, be careful with using specific commands that can limit a player's movement. They can break and you can get stuck and you won't be able to do anything. So create back logs of your world or whatever they're called. Uh, backups, that's what they're called. Yeah, create, create backups of your world or else you might lose it. But also a good safety measure is tags. Only execute on tagged enemies. If you can remove a tag, you can stop the issue. So right now, it is creating that problem. Let's see. If I go this, it goes on cooldown. We can still blink while we are crouched. But why is that? Oh, because we're only checking if you have sneak. Right. Let's go. My ability. Right. Is that spelled right? Ability. Blink. CD. Equals zero. I'm shifting while it's going. It does not TP me as soon as it goes off. And I can activate it. There we go. So now we have a very, very quick and easy blink. It just, as you can see, let me go into third person, use it, and I teleport forward. We can make it a bit further if we want. You can fiddle around with all of these abilities. Let me make it 15 for a very, very large blink forward. And if you want, I'll go through a quick, uh, let's add some particle effects. So we want to execute at the player's position. Again, tag equals my ability. Uh, we don't need to anchor it at the eyes, we can just run a particle command. So for a blink effect, I think a good poof of black smoke would work, or maybe the particle effects of the Enderman. I think I'm going to go with Enderman. Let's see what the Enderman particle effects look like. We want not Enderod. I believe it is called... I don't remember. Let's take a look through... Uh... Or is it, isn't it Eye of Ender or something like that? I know it's Ender, man. Ambient, or is it Teleport? Nope. I'll find it eventually. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, no, it's not Ender Chest. Squid Ink, Splash, Spit, Reverse portal and portal. There it is. That's what they're called. Let's set them here. With the speed of zero, 10. What does that look like? 100. Set a speed of one. There we go. So you want a poof there. That'll create a poof, especially if we move it up by one. Let's look at that. There we go. And then normal portal, I believe, just has the particle effects come in. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the teleport command. And then, whoops, I have teleported myself down. What? It appears I've forgotten to do something here. I've forgotten to go into the MBT and added selected item slot zero. Because I was just teleporting by pressing shift while not on the right slot. We only want to teleport if you're on the right slot. You're going to constantly be bug testing with <laughs> doing these types of commands. A bit archaic. So we want to teleport here. We're creating two separate areas, basically sandwiching the teleport between two different particle effects. So right here, we can just get at the player's position, run, oh whoops, we already have that particle. We want uh, revert, or no, just portal. Place it at the uh, chest height with a 
an origin of 0, 1 speed, let's make it 100. Now, after the player teleports, we are going to put the reverse portal. This way it's going to make a particle effect move us and then create another particle effect. So in third person, it's going to look like this. Well, I have fallen through the map. Where am I? Let's look up a bit so I don't do that again. That looks nice. So we have a particle effect upon leaving and entry. And then we can also create a quick last one where we want to uh, we want to play a sound. We want Ender. We want Minecraft entity. Enderman teleport. And what we want to do is execute at, at p, again, tag equals my ability, run, play sound, this as a player sound for all to hear. We don't need to worry about that. The volume should be 1 and the pitch should be 1. So now when we use this, we play, my, we play an Enderman teleport sound effect. That way you can <laughs> make it look a little better and other people can hear the sound effect and particles too. And this only took a couple command blocks. I mean, more than just one, but it's pretty self-explanatory where you just have HUD, a check for how to activate the ability, activating the ability itself, and then a row for cooldown. And then you can also just remove the ability and not have to worry about it. And then you can give the ability to someone via whatever <laughs> way you want. And it only took one specific scoreboard value for this ability. Making more complex abilities can sometimes require a multitude of scoreboards where this one only has a cooldown. So we only needed one scoreboard value, while some can need a charge time, a delay, and so on. So it will not all abilities will have the same complexity or simplicity as others. So keep that in mind. But this is a pretty good example, I feel, for what you want to be looking for if you're trying to recreate what I do for my videos. Because for next abilities that you could do, you just create what we just did. But on the second slot, rather than going selected item slot 0, you put it on 1, set up all your cooldowns, do whatever, and yeah, I mean, use tutorials, look up, there's so many tutorials, there's so many free uses of stuff that you can find online for just whatever you're trying to create, but <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, you'll find your own way to make whatever you want. I hope this is of use to some people. I... Never really thought I'd be making too many, like a tutorial at all, really, because I didn't think people would want to see it. I just thought they'd see like, hey, cool video. <laughs> but I, I read all the comments and I'm, I'm very happy with how much everyone has been liking my videos. I'm, I've been dead for a while and I don't plan on uploading too much anymore, if, it, if I am sorry to say that, but it, there's only so many stands. If I ever feel like it, I might upload more, but I'm not ever, I'm not really trying to do this as a career, so I do apologize for that, but I hope this is enough to tide you over for now with giving the tutorial that you've always wanted. Uh, not so good at doing voiced videos, so I guess that's all I have. I hope y'all have a fantastic day. Uh, goodbye.